the Passover. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, This month is to be for you. The first month, the first month of your year, tell the whole community of Israel that uh, on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. Now this would be a random weird thing to just make up. It's like, hey, remember when Moses took us out of slavery in Egypt? What? <laughs> yeah, documentary hypothesis, people. Want you to believe the Canaanites for absolutely no reason whatsoever completely changed their religion, their society, their cultural norms. To a non-pork-eating, monotheistic culture. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Well, not all atheists. Some atheists are actually perfectly fine with Moses existing. <laughs> yeah. Why? Because they don't think that disproves their atheism. They're fine with the Bible being historically accurate to a point. They just don't think God is real. <laughs> That's where the real subject is. Anyway. Yes, one must take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb in accordance with what each person will eat. <laughs> the animals you choose must be your old males without defect perfect in other words they must be perfect <clears throat> well perfect as a sheep can be but you, yeah animals usually aren't held to any regards he must take them from the sheep or the goats take care of them until the fourteenth day of the month, when all of Israel, when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. <coughs> twilight. Interesting. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and on the tops of the door frames of the houses where they are to eat the lambs. So they're putting the blood on like wood wooden structures. <coughs> that same night, they are to eat the meat, roasted over the fire, along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. <sighs> bread made without yeast because of how quick they must move. Bitter because their time in slavery was not good. Do not eat the meat raw or cooked in water, but roast it over the fire. Head, legs, and inner parts. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. <laughs> so it must be gone. Not there anymore. Disappeared. And you know what they did? Bones, they kind of... Or sometimes I think they did... Anyway, this is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Why? Because they have to move, move, move. Get out of Egypt. <coughs> that same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I will bring judgment on uh, all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. So, again, this is not like little Billy, 12-year-old Billy. This is whoever is the heir to the household. <laughs> well, a lot of cases, in most cases, would be adults. Probably have in some way or another 
affected Israel negatively or have done nothing to help stop slavery. Their slavery. I keep on pointing that you, Israel is in slavery because there's some people for some bizarre reason who thinks Israel is the bad guys here? They're not? <laughs> like, how dare God bring all these judgments upon Egypt? Like, what are you, pro-slavery? <laughs> What? It's like, how dare the Union win the Civil War? That's basically what you guys are saying. That's what you guys are saying. You're pro-slavery. Bas basically. If you think Israel's a They're not... Egypt's a bad guy, clearly. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and I will see the blood. I will pass over you no destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. <coughs> okay. So, a thousand years, over a thousand years later, another meal, a very important meal, that had to be eaten In a certain time frame because of the Pacific events that were supposed to take place next. And because no one besides the one hosting the meat, well, at the head of the table, knew how long they had left to be with each other. <laughs> one where bread was broken, wine was shared. <clears throat> As symbols of blood being spilt in a broken body. And anyone takes part in this ceremony of remembrance. And accepts the sacrifice made in their place. Just like the sheep, the lamb was put in the place for the Israelites. And its blood as a symbol to pass over will be passed over when the day of judgment comes and the day of destruction and will be spared. <coughs> this day you are to commemorate for generations to come you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. For seven days you are to eat bread made without yeast. On the first day, remove the yeast from your house. For whoever eats anything with yeast in it from the first day through the sevens must be cut off from Israel. <coughs> He's not accepting disobedience at all. No. Ruining the symbolism, thinking you know better. It's like, yeah. On the first day of the whole day sacred assembly, and another one on the seventh day, do not do no work at all on these days except to prepare food for everyone to eat. This is all you may do. <laughs> oh, the sacred days. That aren't specifically the Sabbath to declare holy to the Lord their God and to not do any work <laughs> and hold a sacred assembly on the first day. Oh, it's almost like maybe having church on Sunday isn't breaking the Sabbath commandment. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> celebrate the Feast of Unleavened Bread, because it was on this very day that I brought your divisions out of Egypt. Celebrate this day as a lasting ordinance from for the generations to come. And what happened? It's those thousands of years later, 
People are brought out of slavery from sin. <laughs> In the first month you are to eat bread made without yeast, from evening till the four, from evening of the fourteenth day until the evening of the twenty-first day. For seven days no yeast is to be found in your houses. Whoever eats anything of yeast, it, it, with the yeast in it, must be cut off from the community of Israel. Rather, he is an alien or a nat or native born. Well, in other words, other people from other people groups can participate this in, in this. It's not just like, this is strictly from Israel for Israel only. Everyone else is forbidden. How dare oh, they? They want to participate. They they can. <laughs> because this is more about than just Israel. Eat nothing made with yeast. Whenever you, wherever you live, you must eat unleavened bread. Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. Take a bunch of hips, dip it in the blood, in the blood, yeah, in the basin, and put some of the blood on top of on the top and both sides of the door frame. <coughs> oh wait, where did Jesus go? Oh yeah, and his two hands, either side, and oh, that's some blood on his head, top and coming out the side. Now one of you shall go out the door of his house until morning. <coughs> when the Lord goes through the land to strike the Egyptians, he will see the blood on top of the in the size of the door frames, and will pass over the doorway. Oh, go away. And he will not permit the destroyer to enter your houses and strike you down. Obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your descendants. When you enter the land that the Lord will give you, as he promised, observe this ceremony. And when your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean? Then tell them, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord who passed over the houses of Israel in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. Then the people bowed down and worshipped. The Israelites did just as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. <coughs> yes. At midnight, the Lord struck down all of the firstborn in Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on the throne to the firstborn of the prisoner who was in the dungeon to and the firstborn of all livestock as well, Pharaoh and all his officials and all of the Egyptians got up during the night. And there was a loud wailing in Egypt for there was not a house without someone dead. <laughs> so a lot of these commands you think, this is weird. Well, guess what? As Christians, we have the fulfillment of Passover. We have what... Passover was a shadow of Easter. <laughs> Easter is not a pagan holiday. Easter is Passover. Simple as that. And next Saturday, uh, it's going to be the Exodus, so stay around to that. So I'm going to be leaving an example of how to find you, the playlist, how to find Jesus in the Old Testament, in the description. Anyway, see you then. No, 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 no.